the uh, I was invited to give a talk the uh, uh, sec, to give a talk on the topic of this topic right um, uh, changing public perception of nuclear energy as solution to climate change so based on that topics uh, <coughs> uh, based on that topic I'll uh, make uh, the title is nuclear as environmental friendly energy and practical solution for climate change now the topic is about public perception of nuclear. I mean, this is, I think, is a correct topic. So I will not discuss a technical issue on nuclear that has been discussed uh, thoroughly with the previous speaker, but I will talk about the issue of public perceptions and the issue of uh, climate change and environmentally friendly energy. Okay, now, <clears throat> mind you that this is going to be uh, mind-blowing I think because uh, a lot of things that you probably heard about nuclear I would say 95% what you hear about nuclear is misinformation I mean uh, there's a lot of misinformation about nuclear uh, there is right uh, <clears throat> before I begin I would like to quote the Bible here it's called veritas liberarit vos in Latin and what it means that and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free there's a lot of untruthness in the nuclear right so what i'm going to show you is the truth because if we are going to a challenge to solve climate change the existential threat of humanity then we we have to know the truth what is the truth the truth is number one nuclear has the highest energy density there are only three types of energy in this universe you have the mechanical energy measured in um, megajoule per kilogram that's around 10 you got the chemical energy that fossil fuel that's about 10 to 50 and you got nuclear energy that 80 million times you know you are so you 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 have a big big huge energy density and the other truth about nuclear is nuclear among the safest and the lowest emission there is so these these are the truth okay so why why are we still concerned about nuclear nuclear is the safest and the lowest greenhouse gases emission per terawatt of energy those are the fact the data speak by itself okay that is my opening remarks the, the second is the existential threat okay so this is what we we are facing humanity the global warming now we we are talking about the greenhouse effect meaning that uh, co2 and other gases trap trap hits in keeping the earth warm this is called the greenhouse gases so mind you greenhouse gases it is not just co2 a lot of people when they say climate change they only addresses co2 it is not just co2 there are other gases that get traps right so if you look at the that is the threat and what is the target now this is the target if you look at the see the target this is the ipcc target now if you look at this picture here right uh, this is the no climate policy this is the current policy and you're looking at now we are targeting 1.5 1.5 celsius pathway so you have you're looking at the pathway so if you look at the pathway here in 2050 it need to be close to zero in by 2050 if we want to address climate change right the emission need to be close to zero that is the target right now what is the challenge now ladies and gentlemen this is our the challenge this whole black things are the fossil fuel right these are the fossil fuel right now look at this small dent we're always looking for solar and wind i mean just by looking at this picture it's kind of we can figure by common sense it is an impossible test it is almost impossible test bill gets set bill gates right the richest man in the world to reach zero emission by 2050 uh 1.5 pathway we need to displace all fossil fuel we need a large scale zero carbon right energy system we need an energy miracle we need an energy miracle 
large scale zero carbon energy system right now the the problem here we are going in a circular this is if we you know this is how it pictures right we are going downhill going up here like in circle the current solutions for climate change change i would say is a circular non solution it just seems to address the issue but does not actually address the root causes and fundamental this is veritas liberare fos okay we are going in around in around in a circle i will show what what i mean bill gates says what is this energy miracle right when bill gates uh, try to define the energy miracle it says there are four criteria number one, it need to be clean number two, it need dispatchable dispatchable meaning that the energy could be on demand at any time anywhere right it cannot be dependent on the weather right 24 hour on demand it need to be scalable and it need to be cheap these are the type of energy that need to have in order to solve climate change ladies and gentlemen now energy now has to aspect right when i was studying energy in the 80s energy you just talking about cost reliability and large scale now now it adds more because energy now has an environmental issue which is it need to be minimal impact on the environment and the ecosystem now what i'm trying to propose in this talk is to define what is so-called environmental uh, uh, friendly energy because a lot of people been talking about environmentally friendly energy what so-called the green energy and not to a lot not to, uh, to not too many people when they talk about environmentally friendly energy nuclear is never on the table this is wrong okay let's let's go through the definition i mean this is this is what i define right of course, we all agree that number one, it need to be no emission, whether it's CO2 or methane CH4, right? We all agree that no emission. Number two, of course, we agree that the so-called environmentally friendly energy does not destroy landscape, large scale land clearing. Of course, we agree that, right? If it's destroying landscape, like uh, uh, making land clearing in huge land clearing, of course, you cannot say that environmentally friendly number three when operating when the energy system operating does not endanger or even kill or destroy the ecosystem when operating of course we agree this also right i mean it is insane if we don't agree on number three number four of course it's about waste the waste need to be stored contain and manage okay because every other human activity whether industrial or non-industrial or even ourselves we produce waste everything we do we produce waste so the waste issue it is not producing waste by itself but whether you store it you contain it and you manage it number five when you talk about environmentally friendly of course you need to be sustainable resources meaning minimal mining for both fuel and material number six when you're talking about environmentally friendly you think talking about uh, sustainable it need also to be economically sustainable that is eroy energy return on investment or commercially viable without subsidy now let's go with the definition number one now does not emit greenhouse gases of course we all agree that but what sometimes we forget right these are the greenhouse gases Greenhouse gases, ladies and gentlemen, it is not just CO2, but you have CH4, which is methane. That's 80%. The problem with methane is that it is 30 times more potent as heat trapping gas, meaning methane is more dangerous than CO2. True, in a gas powered power plant, it uses 50% less, it produces 50% less. CO2 or 45% less CO2. But in reality, it is more dangerous. Methane, it is more dangerous. So you cannot say natural gas is environmentally friendly. This is the problem. We always say 
natural gas is very friendly. It is not, ladies and gentlemen, natural gas, it is not environmentally friendly. True, it admits only 45% of CO2, but 45% is still CO2, nonetheless, right? Now, what about then if we, do, uh, what about, what are the options? So the option, there are two groups. One is the intermittent energy of the energy farming. One is like the wind turbines and the solar panel. Now, then the other one on the other side is the dispatchable energy. You have large scale hydro, you have geothermal and you have nuclear. But the problem here is on the left side, it is not working all the time. You know that, and the capacity factor is under 30%. Whereas on the right side, it is operating 24 hour and the capacity factor is 75%. Now, being an intermittent creates a lot of problem, okay? It creates, this intermittent create a lot of problems because of the low capacity factor. What are the problem? You got, you have, you got basically two problem. You got the intermittency problem, and you got the low energy problem. So you have all this issue. You got backup, you got storage, you got grid stability, and you need to have incentive. So I, I always say, right, progress is the central of humanism. It's about doing more with less effort. That is progress. But if you are doing less with more effort, that is regress. So doing less with more effort, this is more effort, it is regressing. It is not progressing. Okay, so the problem with this issue, with this all uh, backup, grid stability, incentive, at all, are getting the tariff so high. So if you look at this graph, you can see that the more renewables you have in a country, the higher the electricity tariff, right? Now, the second issue is, of course, number two, is do not destroy, destroy landscape and large-scale land clearing. Of course, we agree on this, right? It means footprint. Footprint is very important. Why? Because we are living on Earth. Earth, where, whether it is called Earth, but in fact, it is all sea because only 30% it is land. So this 30% is land are uh, in competing in food, housing, infrastructure, industry, feedstock, landscape, forest, of course, in energy. Now, if you look at the graph in population, right? The uh, human population will level off around 16 billion. We are now at the 7 billion. So even though it is leveling off about 16 billion at 16 billion, but the energy, it keep growing. The food is keep growing. The housing keep growing, right? Everything is keep growing. So energy density become important, meaning footprint becomes important. We need a small footprint, energy footprint. Now, if we look at footprint, this is a comparison. This is Hinkley C, nuclear power plant in England. If you look at this, this one Hinkley C, it only uses 175 hectares, whereas a comparable solar panel will, will use land 52,000 hectares. And if we look at wind farm, it uses 100,000 hectares. Now, if we take this number and we project it in Jakarta, right? So this is Hinkley C, just a dot, right? If we put a wind turbine, it will cover the whole of Jakarta, including Bekasi. Now, if we put a solar panel, it just cover the whole of Bekasi. Now, this is ridiculous. I mean, definitely you cannot say that this is environmentally friendly. Now, look at this. Do you think this is environmentally friendly? Cutting down all the tree, massive land clearing. Can you tell me this is environmentally friendly? Of course not. Okay. And what about definition number three? Does not endanger or harm ecosystem, species, or human during operation. Now let's look at this definition, right? Now, this wind turbine kills birds. In fact, in America, it kills about 3,000 birds at bats, right? Now, this is all, you can Google this. Please Google this. It kills birds and bats. Half a million birds and bats kills by wind turbine. I mean, can you call this environmentally friendly? Of course not. 
What about solar farm? Solar farm also kills bird. There's about 140,000 bird annually killed by the solar panel. Why? Because these bird thought are this because of the reflection from the sky thought that this is a lake. So they dive into the solar panel and it kills them, right? The same thing. What about uh, uh, this? This is an interesting part. This is a concentrated solar. Also kills bird in mid-air, even it burn it alive. Okay, what about human? Yes, infrasound. So this wind turbine create infrasound and flicker. It also affected human, right? Wind turbine and human health. You can Google it, right? It affect the eardrum. It affect the heart rate. Right, that's why in Europe and in America, the distance between wind turbine and uh, population and residential area is becoming larger and larger and larger. Why? Because of this infrasound of because of this flicker. Right? These are the study. You can Google it. It is all Googleable. It is there. You need just to search it. Right? What about here? NIMBY, not in my backyard. A lot of people, when they talk about not in my backyard, they always associate it with nuclear. But in fact, in America, in Europe, wind turbine. Sometimes also people reject wind turbine, of course, because of those issues. What about not in my backyard in nuclear? But in nuclear, st uh, statistics say, the survey said, this is a survey being done in America, 83% people who live uh, close to nuclear power plant, in fact, support nuclear power plant. Why? Because they know it is safe. It does not endanger species. It did not emit any waste. So people who uh, live close to nuclear power plant, who know the fact, who know the science, in fact, 80% support nuclear power plant compared to the general public, 68%. So these are the facts. What about the waste? Now the waste. When you're talking about waste, waste need to be contained, managed, and stored, right? Because everybody, everything uh, makes waste. Now these are the global annual waste production. You got the industrial waste, agriculture waste, construction waste, municipal waste, hazardous waste, medical waste, electronic waste, then nuclear waste. Look at the number. Nuclear waste is a hundred, a uh, hundred thousand less than the industrial waste. A hundred thousand less. One of a hundred thousand. You imagine? This is very small. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is not an issue. So if all the world, if all the world right now is powered by nuclear power plant right, is powered by nuclear power plant, right, all the ways that uh, in your lifetime is equal to this aqua battle, right, only this aqua battle, all the ways generated by nuclear power plant in your whole life, if your whole life, let's say, goes to 90 years of age, it is the size of this aqua battle, it is very small. Right now, this is a coal fly ash. If it's not nuclear, then it's coal. This is the hard fact. Now, this is nuclear. Right? What about waste from solar PV? Right? Solar PV also have toxic waste. It is leaching. It is contaminating the water. These are the facts. These are the article. Right? You got cadmium. You have selenium. You have gallium. You have selenium. You have indigium, indigium, many toxic waste, right? It is leaching. It is leaching the water table. What about a wind turbine? The same with wind turbine. It is called unsustained wind turbine blade disposal. The problem with wind turbine, it has by this panel A. This panel A damages human therapy. This is how this this is how they dispose wind turbine blades. They just put it here and it degrades. And inside this fiber fiberglass, you have bisphenol A. The Norwegian Environmental Protection Agency just released this paper that this is leaking. 
this damaging toxic waste called bisphenol A. It is damaging human fertility and then it is leaching to the water table, right? Because it is not contained, it is not managed, it is toxic and possible harm to the environment. What about nuclear? Nuclear is contained, is managed and it is stored, okay? So nothing got leaks, nothing got leaks, okay? What about in the future? This is a Nobel Prize winner. His name is Gerard Moreau. He is devising a technology that he would laser this nuclear waste. So something that could end up for uh, millions of years or thousand years just become safe within 30 minutes. This is already being done, right? This is being researched. So within the next decades or two, I think we have this technology. So nuclear waste is no longer an issue. What about the mining, right? In order to be a sustainable, meaning that you list, uh, use less resources, both fuel and material. Mind you, fuel and material. A lot of people just say about the fuel, right? A lot of people don't talk about the material use, right? Let's, because resources, whether you're mining for fuel or whether you're mining for material, it is still, it is still called mining resources, right? Now, if we look at this, the material used by energy system, nuclear uses the less resources, meaning it uses less mining. Why? because of the energy density. What about wind? What about solar? It uses the highest material. True, they do not use fuel, but they use a lot of material. Why? Because of the low energy density. Low energy density, right? Because of the low energy density, it requires them more material per megawatt of constructions, right? What about the sustainable economically, right? Of course, when you say about sustainability, that you need to be sustainable economically. You don't need to be subsidized, right? There is a word, it's called EROI, energy return on investment. Again, it is because of the energy density. If you look at the nuclear EROI, it's very high, right? Now, if you look at the solar, wind, etc., right it uses more uh, input rather than so the output generated it is less than the input uh, put in right the input uh, uh, put it into the investment so it is not economically viable right now this is the subsidy in electricity in indonesia i don't want to go that you know take too long but you can see it is keep on growing right it is it keep on growing now, what about the uh, lot of uh, uh, subsidy has been given in renewable from 2000 and let's say 2090, uh, two th from 2000 until 2050, $4 trillion has been spent. Now you can Google this, this is by BP, right? From 2000 until 2015, you got 4 trillion of subsidy and incentive to, uh, to to renewables but if you look at the percentage of renewable look at this percentage of renewable it is going up but so is the co2 emission why is that why is that why is the more renewable you have the more co2 emission you have because of the low capacity factor it need backup right now this also this is the challenge right now, this is the challenge. 78% 70, of the world uh, uh, energy is fossil. And you look at this wind and solar. It's still small. It spent $4 trillion. How, how would you tackle this? Now, the second fact is that a lot of people don't know, right? don't realize that if this is the total energy, about 87% is fossil, about only 13% is uh, clean energy, only 13%. If you break down that 13%, number one is hydro, number two is nuclear, number three is wind, solar, and others, right? The problem with hydro, hydro in a, the 
in the next decades or two, right? The next decade or two, this number has reached its maximum because you don't have any more river to, to them. Okay, you don't have any more river to them anymore. So this number will flatten out. So how would you solve climate change? Nuclear, right? Nuclear has the capacity. Now I'm coming now to the end, right? Nuclear as the practical solution to climate change. Now I point out his practical because of course you have the not practical, right? You have the practical solution and you have the not practical solution. Now let's see those two. The practical solution is nuclear because it go directly. Capacity factor 90%. You just go directly from the nuclear power plant to the grid. What about the non-practical solution? Now you got the intermittent, then you need to have a grid storage. You need to have a backup usually, which is fossil, which is usually, usually gas. Then you have the frequency regulator because the frequency is not going stable. You need to have a stable in Indonesia, 50 Hertz of frequency, right? Because of the intermittency, it creates irregular frequency. When you have irregular, you need to balance it. Out. No, no, right. You need to be somewhere far, far, far away. So you have additional transmission line. All of this created effort, created more cost. So I would say this is a non-practical solution. You want a practical solution? Go nuclear. You don't need all of this, right? Because of this backup 75%, guess who is operating, right? Now, uh, intermittent energy only operates about 20 to 30%. What about the rest 75%? The rest is 75% is operating. It is fossil. Guess what? Whether it's gas or whether it's coal. So this is the problem. If you look at, this is uh, done by Grant Chalmer. Grant Chalmer is a data scientist from Australia. He made this data from World Bank and DP Statistical, right? If you look at this, right? This is hydro, this is nuclear. Right, so underneath this is capacity. This is capacity on the vertical line. It is the carbon intensity. So if you look at the graph for hydro, the more capacity it installed, the lower the emission. The same with nuclear. The more capacity you install, the lower its emission. What about solar? Down here is solar. It is flat. So in solar case, the more capacity you install, it does not lower the emission. The same goes with wind. Why is that? Because of the low capacity factor. You need to have backup, backup which is fossil. So the fossil uh, emission from the backup for the solar and wind added to the uh, carbon intensity. So it does not go down. This is our the fact. These are the data. These are the science. Okay. Now, if you aggregate those, this is the aggregate you have between hydro and nuclear. So the, if we want to reduce emission, if we want to reduce emission and solve climate change, it is very clear by this empirical scientific data and facts that you need to use hydro and nuclear, right? Putting more solar and wind, right, based on the fact and the data does not reduce uh, emission, right? This is also another data. This is carbon intensity. If you look at this carbon intensity, this is carbon intensity. See, this is gram CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour, right? So it, these are the gray mark is the emission target. If you look at the emission target, only with French, Sweden, and Ontario. On country, it is a province. What about Germany? The so-called climate champions, right? The so-called champion. It is very high. You know, 
Like, let's look at the data. Now, the, you can Google this. This is electricitymap.org. This, this here in the Android, you look at, at French, right? You could look at the journey of French. It is at 49 gram, right? 49 gram uh, of fire compared to Germany. Germany has four times, eight times, right? Eight times more dirtier, right? It is called the climate champions, but Germany is very dirty, right? What about Sweden? Look at the number, right? French uses 68% nuclear and then uses 13% hydro. The same with Sweden, uses 34% nuclear and 37% hydro. So it is very clear. You can download this app. You can Google it. Who has the uh, lowest uh, carbon emission? Now, what about French president Emmanuel Macron? Right? You can Google it. He says this. What did Germany do when they shut down nuclear? They add a lot of nuclear, a lot of renewable energy. But they they also add a lot of oil, it makes footprint worse. It is not good for the planet. So I'm not going to do it. French will still use nuclear. This is Emmanuel Macron. He does not want to follow Germany. Okay. Now, these are the comparison between Germany and French on the carbon emission. Look at that. On the top, it is Germany, even with the energy when they program, right? It does not lower it. Look at French, when it uses nuclear power generation in the 70s, it start building nuclear power plant, the emission goes down rapidly. Okay, Energy Wende, it is a fail program. Energy Wende, this is in Der Spiegel. Der Spiegel is one of the Germany top magazine. Marks in Germany, in Der Spiegel. The Energy Wende, the biggest political project since renovation, threatened to fail. This is from Tony Abbott, former Australian PM. In Germany, the mad rush to green energy has led to skyrocketing electricity costs, crony capitalism, massive redistribution of wealth from the poor to the rich, and unstable power supply. Moreover, energy intensive companies are exempted from paying the green energy fit in surges and thus leaving the lowly consumer to foot the entire bill. Meaning what? It is failing. This energy when they in Germany, it is failing, right? So we should not look Germany for an example. We should look at French for an example to lower emission and to solve climate change. What about Bill Gates, the richest man in the world? He used to be the richest man in the world. This is what he said. Nuclear is the only Nuclear is the only realistic solution to combat climate change. That is why I urge the world leader to start embracing nuclear. This is Bill Gates, what he wrote in his Gate Notes in January 2019. I mean, this guy is the richest man in the world. He does not have any interest in nuclear, does not have any interest in renewable, does not have any interest in uh in energy but his interest is saving the planet so i think we should listen to him right another guy i know this guy dr seven kiss right he wrote this book i know the guy very well right in his book he wrote there are only two countries in the world that has solved the climate change both uses nuclear F and hydro and the rest can follow that is Sweden and French, okay? He wrote in his book. What about the IPCC? What did IPCC said? IPCC is the sole authority on climate change in the United Nations. In, his, in their book in 2018 report, he says, nuclear power is essential if the world is to keep global warming to below 1.5 degree. It is essential. You cannot achieve uh, this target without nuclear. So stop debating and stop uh, 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 discussing about nuclear and stop and start implementing if we truly say that climate change is existential threat. Now, this is an, an interesting study. This is just released last year. This is by the European Commission Science and 
knowledge uh, services. Uh, a lot of uh, the European Union, European Union country are debating whether nuclear can be called environmentally friendly energy, right? Or a green energy. Why? Why it is important? Because apparently by getting the green energy status, this country or this country will receive a lot of incentive. So there is a lot of incentive and subsidize for the so-called green energy. And Germany and some other people called that nuclear is not green. Why? Because of this, all this environmental issue, which is actually, actually, it's a hoax. It is not true, especially the waste. Now, this is the conclusion. This is the conclusion, okay? You can read it online. The analysis, this analysis, right, did not reveal any science-based evidence. So, mind you, science-based evidence, okay, that nuclear energy does more harm to human health or the environment, meaning it does not uh, give more harm other than electricity production already included in the taxonomy of as activity supporting climate change mitigation. What does it mean? It means that it's the impact to the environment and human health of nuclear, it is the same. It is the same. Again, it is the same as any other energy system that is called green. Okay, it is the same. It is not more, less, it is the same impact. Then part A show that the impact of nuclear energy are mostly comparable with hydropower and renewable with regard to non radiological effect. So there you have it, right? There you have it, authority. This is a 1,000 pages report made by all the science, sci uh, uh, scientific knowledge by all the experts in the European Union. These are the conclusion that nuclear is environmentally friendly and sustainable energy system. What, what about in Indonesia? Falcon just uh, uh, released a study done by the University of Sebelas Maret. This is a historical milestone for nuclear in Indonesia. The first academic study to explain that nuclear is sustainable, environmentally friendly energy that was carried objectively and was reviewed by 15 reviewer. That's including the chairman of Commission 7 the director general of uh, new and renewable uh, in energy uh, uh, in ministry of energy the pln and a lot of people right so the conclusion is the same this paper this academic study the conclusion is exactly the same that nuclear is the solution for environmentally friendly energy and sustainable thank you very much that's my uh, my presentation i hope it's open up a new thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much uh, to Bapak Bob S. Effendi. Uh,